Hi guys, as most of you know, I'm currently on a journey in developing my very first indie game, Whisplay. It's an RPG game, but here you play as a monster instead of the usual hero. And for me to make this game immersive, one of my goals is to make our enemy AI smart. I want to make them act like how humans engage in battle when they face monsters in an RPG game. And in the past few months, the main focus of our development journey is solely on the creation of super smart enemy AI behaviors and our our combat system. And today, in this devlog, we will discuss further on how we can improve our enemy AI. In the previous video where we talk about our breaking mechanic, I gave a sneak peek on new behaviors for a mercenary group, and today, I will show you guys how I made this new AI behavior. So just to give you an introduction and some lore to our enemy group, here we have the mercenaries. They're a group of ragtag criminals or outlaws sent from the mainland to the island to become slave prisoners. Some of these outlaws are employed by the church to gather rare resources for their mages in exchange for the opportunity to earn their freedom. The mercenaries are composed of three types of enemies with different behaviors. One is the mercenary guard, which is the main defender of the group. Then we have the torchbearers, a support type character that helps the group with the necessary stuff needed for their expedition, like preparing their meals, carrying baggages, scouting, basically the group's go-to errand boy. Then we have their employer, the Acolyte, the lowest rank mage sent by the Kingdom's Church to gather a rare resource called Life Essence that fuels the Kingdom's magic. When we design our enemies, we must take note of their purpose and motivations, and the motivators for the mercenaries are 1. To gather Life Essence 2. To defend their employer, the Acolyte and three, to capture Price Wisp like yourself if they encountered one. So currently we have three behaviors for the group. We already have the idle behavior where the Acolyte gathers resources while the rest of the group rests while the Torchbearer scouts for threats. Then we have our battle behavior where they engage in battle with the threat they are facing. And lastly, we have the fleeing behavior where they run away from the threat if they feel that they have no chance of winning. We'll be diving deep on the battle behavior in this devlog and we'll check some issues with the current state of the battle behavior. So of the moment, the battle behavior works like this. When a member of the mercenary group sees you, they immediately try to eliminate you. The first thing they will do is to circle around you, while the acolyte will cast a binding debuff to slow you down. Another behavior we implemented for this group is for them to charge at you if the acolyte is threatened. Also, they will charge at you if they can see that you are binded by the binding debuff the acolyte casts. So far, this group's behavior is challenging enough and it's fun to engage with them. But with a lot of testing and feedback gathered from you guys, here are some feedback and suggestions that pops out the most. And as we go through this feedback and suggestions, we'll fix them along the way. One. The Acolyte's health is too high for a mage character with no armor. So to fix this, let's nerf the Acolyte's health, but we'll boost its ability to dodge. So instead of being tanky, he'll be weak but evasive. 2. Most of the time, our strategy involves defeating the Acolyte first before defeating the rest of the group, since the Acolyte is more tedious and spams his binding spells frequently. So to fix this, we first need to nerf the cast time for the debuff spell to deploy. This way, we'll have a chance to battle with the rest of the group since the Acolyte no longer spams spells that frequently. Second is to make targeting the Acolyte first be risky. So let's fix this by increasing the sprinting speed of our torchbearers since they're supposed to be lightweight and agile. This will give a lot of risk if we prioritize defeating the Acolyte in battle. The next issue is when the mercenary guards move towards you, they'll just slowly approach you till they're near, then they'll attack. It's boring and not engaging enough. So to fix this, we will make a new behavior that will make the guards rush towards you, then do a skill combo when they're near you. But we need to tie this down to their stamina to balance out this skill. This way, they'll not spam this skill and overwhelm the player. Now, let's add another aggressive behavior tied to their stamina. They have high stamina and if they are circling around you, you'll have them sprint to make them faster in positioning themselves in the battlefield. This way, the battle will be more fast-paced and also, we'll avoid them from lumping up with each other. 
Let's first make new animations when they are circling. Let's use a new sprinting animation for this. Then let's check the guard's stamina and trigger the sprinting when his stamina is enough. And for the last issue, I have one of my patron, Michael Moscato, commented as I posted a short demo of the new aggressive guard's behavior. And here's his comment. I wonder, would it be possible to have at least one guard stay right next to the athlete? whenever there are more than one guard in the party, while the others rush and flank you like you have now, I feel that the acolyte is a little too easy to get close to. So with this feedback, I came up with an idea to have a rear guard. So the rear guard's job is to always prioritize the protection of the acolyte. So to do this, we will make a function that will assign a rear guard to the acolyte. Then we will have the rear guard get close to the acolyte and only engage in battle if you are near. So you can see, this mercenary guard is in guard mode and will only engage in battle if we get too close to the acolyte and the guard. He will also attempt to flank us from the sides, but will eventually retreat back to the acolyte when we move too far from them. I also added additional behavior to the rear guard where he will always position himself beside the acolyte with clear visibility of the player. So even though we as the player will circle around the acolyte in an attempt to confuse them, both of them will be cautious and will always have clear visibility of their threat. I also added a behavior where he will always have his guard up if he's standing still or is walking slowly. With this new behavior, this will hopefully give the acolyte a defensive advantage. Now let's further make this feature even smarter. What if we defeat the rear guard? What will happen next? Will the acolyte lose its defensive advantage? So to make this more interesting, let's have a new rear guard assigned when the current rear guard is dead. This way, the acolyte is always defended. Now let's test it. Let's try and eliminate this guard and see if it will assign a new one. Great, it works. Now the acolyte has a new rear guard and will continue to assign new rear guards until there are no more guards left in the party. Now let's test everything we've done so far. So here we have the mercenaries engaging in battle with us, trying to flank us and circle around us to do some surprise attack. And at the far back, you can see our rear guard trying to protect the acolyte that's casting its debuff spell. While the rest of the party is trying to pummel us while we are crippled. Let's watch out for our stability and hold our guard up until the debuff ends. Now let's position ourselves and think of a strategy. For now, let's not do our usual strategy while we prioritize the acolyte first. Let's test a new strategy where we will slowly pick and eliminate the party while dodging the debuff spell. Let's start with this torchbearer. While we're trying to engage with this enemy, let's try and notice the behaviors of the rest of the party. As you can see, the rear guard slowly approaches when we get near the acolyte. Also, when we move too far away from the acolyte, the rear guard disengages with its flanking and retreats back in defensive mode. Now, this torchbearer is down. Try to notice the movement of the enemies flanking. They'll try and position themselves to find an opening to use their rushing skill. Now let's target this guard. Let's land some hits to stun him. Alright, his poise is broken and now he's stunned. Let's watch out for the debuff spell though. We don't want them rushing towards us. Let's be cautious. Let's keep hitting this guard till he breaks. Then, let's execute him. This new strategy is also a viable option to defeat this group. We don't really want to have just one single approach in engaging in battle with the mercenaries. We want our players to be creative in finding solutions to beat the challenges in front of them. Now, let's put an end to this torchbearer. Let's land some hits to bring his poise down so that our torchbearer will be stunned and is easily open for an execute attack. Now he's stunned. Let's execute him. Now with most of the party gone, the rest of the group is fearful and doubts their capability to bring you down. Let's chase and destroy them starting with this acolyte. Let's gather his life essence and replenish our fortitude. Yeah, I changed the name of our health stat to fortitude. This means strength or the ability for us to hold our form long term. While stability, the green stat, is our ability to hold our form short term. With the addition of the breaking mechanic, 
we'll develop a feature in the future that lets us pick up the broken pieces and repair them back to full form. And you can do this ability if your fortitude is still high up or if your monster just broke because of low stability. We'll be discussing more on this extension for the breaking mechanic in future devlogs, so if you're interested in following our development, feel free to subscribe to get updated. You can also help support the game by wishlisting it on Steam. We're already live and we need all the support we can get. Making this game solo is really hard, especially if you're also the one in charge of marketing it. And by wishlisting our game on Steam, you'll really help us a lot in pushing our game to interested gamers out there. Also, I would like to thank my Patreons for supporting me all the way. All the funds raised in Patreon will go to the funding of Wisplite's asset, so thank you so much for the support. And if you want to help support Wisplite's development, I'll leave a link to our Patreon page down in the description. Now, most of the mercenaries are gone. Let's hunt and eliminate this last one. Also, let me know what you think of our new mercenary behaviors and balance changes. Like the video if you think the feature is great, and also feel free to comment your feedback and suggestions down in the comment section. I will read and reply to all of them. One of our goals is to make Wisplite a game that is community driven. As much as possible, I want you guys to be part of its creation. In the past months in this development journey, our community contributed a lot to the conceptualization of Wisplite. And because of you guys, it's already forming to be the game that most of us wants it to be. So keep those feedback and suggestions coming. So on our next devlog, we'll continue with our breaking mechanic and we'll develop the repair feature where we'll pick up the broken pieces and reconjure the monster back to full form once again. Hope you guys enjoy this video and see you on the next devlog. Till next time.